I'm Pastor Bill Schultz, and I want to welcome you to the Hungry Hearts Church service in Jackson, Tennessee. Hungry Hearts Church is non-denominational with the use of certain Hebrew worship tools like this tallit or the shofar. Uh, we believe that Yeshua Messiah died to pay for the sins of all mankind, and having accepted his sacrifice for our sins, we live by all of his commandments. We're filled with his spirit, and we worship him with it. And today, we're going to present to you a great message directly from the Word of God. Hey, today we're going to talk about rise and shine like the stars. We're preparing for Pentecost or Shavuot, and uh, the Lord has been giving me a lot of amazing revelation to give you this year, which I'm excited to do at the end of the month. On the other hand, I want to refresh everybody's memory because I'm not going to have time to refresh your memories when I give that message. Amen. All I'll tease you with is this. When he gave the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words came off of that mountain in fire. Yeah, they did. So that's the shameless plug. You can turn to Daniel 12. <clears throat> I know we dissected this verse uh, last year at Pentecost. And I'm not going to dissect it now. I'm just going to kind of hit on one spot of it. But if you remember, we went through the brightness of the heavens. We went through the firmament. We went through the Hebrew words. We went through all of the great stuff. And I'm probably not going to get to refresh that, that message beforehand. But anyway, Daniel 12 and verse 3. <clears throat> Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like stars forever and ever. So you're supposed to shine like a star. You're going to shine like a star. Well, that used to be a fun thing. Stars fill the universe. <clears throat> they radiate light and heat, and they have mass and gravity. Stars have other bodies in orbit around them. Stars and planetary systems have energy flow. So you may or may not be familiar with the solar winds, but a couple of weeks ago we had a display of the northern lights that came down into northern Kentucky and northern Missouri. That comes from the solar winds striking the, the ionosphere of the, of the Earth's atmosphere, not so much noticeable around the, uh, the equator as it is at the poles. So there's a energy flows. Our sun energy flows into it from what's ever at the center of the galaxy. So people debate what's at the center of the galaxy and they say, oh, we saw a black hole. I don't know about you guys. I don't know how much science y'all took. But, yeah, <laughs> let me say that was good. But the basic definition of a black hole is it's so dense it sucks in the light. So how did you see it? If it sucks in the light, how did you see it? So they said, we saw a black hole. And they show you the picture of the black hole up there. And I'm like, that can't be a black hole because by definition, it sucks in the light. So you can only see the light that comes from somewhere. You can't see the light that's not there. But since no one took science, they can just say whatever they want. And the news media reports, oh, yes, they saw a black hole. Evidence proof positive. I'm like, oh, goodness. All right. So your Holy Spirit energy wells up from within. And I, I was talking in Corinth about, I think it's in, in, Di, in uh, Murfreesboro where I had the picture of the guy within the guy. The guy within the guy. So you're riding in your earth suit, as Jill calls it. We're going to call it a jar of clay in this message. But you're riding in here, but the real person is inside of this, and it's, it's got the Holy Spirit in it. Then that Holy Spirit is coming into you from somewhere, and it should be going out of you into other places. People should notice that when you show up. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to, tongues are a visible sign of that spring of Holy Spirit. So people say, I don't like tongues. Well, okay, you don't have to have tongues. People say, I don't have to have tongues. Okay, you don't. But tongues are a sign that the energy is flowing into you and out of you. So if you don't, there's no visible sign other than that. And look, it wasn't my choice. I'm not the one that wrote the Bible, but that's the visible choice we have. So I don't know. Note to self, self, I kind of want to have it flowing in. I kind of want it to have it flowing in. Life gets very uh, unnerving when it's not flowing in. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to go there, but John 4, verses 13 and 14, he talks of, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit being a Peggy Halami, two Greek words, and I always relate it down to Blue Springs because that's the only sp spring of that size I've been to. In the cave at Blue Springs, it's bigger than that whole wall over there, and millions of gallons of water are flowing out of it. Matter of fact, divers can't even swim into the cave. They have to pull themselves down with ropes. You can't swim in that. There's too much water. I literally got within, I don't know, this room's 
width from that spring and, and you can't even fall into the water. There's so much water pressure coming out. You have a hard time keeping from going back with the current. This is the headwater for the St. Johns River. So we're talking mighty. We're talking a lot. So for those of you who've never been to Florida or, or don't remember much about it, uh, I went recently and we had to cross the St. Johns River at Jacksonville. It's several miles wide. It makes the Mississippi look like a ditch. Wow. It makes the Mississippi look like a ditch. And, <clears throat> you know, in the middle of this is the, the high-rise part over the, cha the shipping channel for the boats. But this thing goes for miles on either side of that. Then I thought if this bridge collapses, we'll drown because there's no way we're going to swim to the shore. It's too far. Even for me, it's too far because it's a wide river. Well, okay, that all comes out of Blue Springs in Deland. Okay, so we're talking a lot of water here. This is what's available to you through the power of the Holy Spirit by praying in tongues. That's what he's talking about. So our sun derives its center from the center of the galaxy, and it flows out and it radiates the other planets in the system. Okay, so we're sitting on the third rock from the sun, as they used to say. And that sun, if you look at it full strength, will burn the retinas out of the back of your eyeballs at 93 million miles away. That's a lot of power. Okay, this is a prophecy for some people of God. So when you walk in, you radiate the place. When you walk in, they should feel that something changed in the atmosphere because you showed up. Because the Holy Spirit is supposed to be flowing into you and out of you wherever you go. We're going to get more in that in a minute. Now, Pentecost is the Feast of the Wedding or the Feast of the First Resurrection. So we're going to go to the Resurrection chapter, 1 Corinthians 15. Interesting, you know, uh, my brother Jeff had promised my dad that he said, I'm going to be there when you wake up. And uh, <clears throat> dad never was brought to. <clears throat> when they finally tried, it was over already. And so... Uh, Jeff being a normal traditional Sunday Christian they believe in heaven or hell right now if there's no middle ground it's, it's all one or the other and I, I brought the resurrection chapter up and I kept saying it's going to be okay well no he, he wouldn't accept Jesus and I'm like it's going to be okay he's going to come up in the resurrection I said read 1 Corinthians 15 first part of this chapter Paul is proving the resurrection of the dead and he's, he, he makes this supposition <clears throat> There's a resurrection of the dead for everybody because Christ was resurrected. And if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ wasn't resurrected and we lied. But in fact, Christ was resurrected, therefore there's a resurrection of the dead. Pretty, pretty solid logic. But now we're going to talk about what kind of resurrection because everybody comes up each in his own order. There's different kinds. My dad's going to come up at the end. So I told my brother Jeff before I left Florida, gave him a big hug, and I said, you and I are going to keep your promise. You and I are going to keep your promise. We're going to be there when he comes up. You and I are going to keep that promise. When he comes to, we're going to be there. We're going to be there. That gave him some hope. Because, you know, where the church he goes to, they don't have any hope. My dad died a heathen sinner. In that world, there's no hope. Game over. Story, story's done. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35. But someone will ask, <coughs> excuse me, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish what you sow, sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps, of wheat. This is your first clue he's working on his Pentecost message. The resurrection of the dead and the, and the rescue of the saints being one and the same is what he's working on. You get clues to that in chapter 16, by the way. <clears throat> but he's working on Pentecost. Why do I say that? Because wheat is harvested at Pentecost. So how many of you driving around see all the wheat? It's got nice, big, solid heads of grain on it. Matter of fact, up where I take my trash, it's starting to yellow a little bit. So this wheat will be ready for Pentecost. Now, th this year, Pentecost is early. It's in late May. Funny how that follows, isn't it? So all the calendar people have been fussing at me for years. Oh, you got to follow this calendar. Oh, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. But the wheat's always ready at Pentecost. What do you want me to say? The moon's always on the first crescent when I come out of trumpets, and, and the wheat's always ready at Pentecost, and everything's following the one I'm on. So what's up? And not only that, the Lord keeps showing up with his presence on Holy Day, so I, I guess I'm doing all right. But God gives it a body as he is determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Now, not all flesh is the same. He talks about the different animals. But verse 40, there's heavenly bodies and there's earthly bodies. Well, you're in your earthly body now, right? He's telling you there's a heavenly body 
his earthly body. The splendor of the heavenly bodies is different than the splendor of the earthly bodies. Let's paraphrase. Splendor. What does splendor mean? Splendor means light emitting. Right now, you don't have any light coming out, right? So in science, they call that a black body. Any body, any object that does not have light emitting is called a black body. And all of modern chemistry is based on black body radiation, which we'll get to in just a second. But he's saying that you're going to have the splendor of a heavenly body. The sun has one kind of splendor, all right? Remember Hanukkah a few years ago, we talked about light and how the Hebrew word light, or, is Aleph, Vav, O, Resh. And there was a story behind the power of God coming through the light and how the sun, the splendor of the greater sun, was Ma'or, with the Mem meaning the spring. So God is pouring energy into this solar system through that fireball out there. And that is radiating the whole solar system. Simple things. Hebrew concepts, deep science, it's all right there in the first, first chapter of your Bible. Amazing. And he gave it to a Stone Age man, people. So, you know, the old Geico commercials, even a stone, a stone man, a caveman can do it. Say, so he gives it to cavemen, essentially, as far as we're concerned, with our modern technology and cell phones and all the rest of it. And we're the ones that struggle. So he gives it to them. They're a bunch of goat herders in the desert, and they get it, and we struggle. What's up with that? All right. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and stars another, and each star differs from star in splendor. Okay. Not everybody's going to have the same glory when you come up in the resurrection. Oh, but Pastor, everybody gets the same. No, everybody doesn't get the same. Over and over again, the Bible doesn't say everybody gets the same. It says everybody's going to be different. What do we read in Daniel? You got to turn many to righteousness. You got to follow the ways. You'll be a star in the firmament. Okay. So I've been I've been doing this a long time. I'm old now. When I started out, I didn't have a gray hair on me. Now, you with all these people, you find that some people really their heart is in it, and some people not so much. And some people come in and so on fire, and they blow up in a couple years, and they're gone. Some people stay with it, right? You determine what kind of splendor you're going to have by what you give the Lord. What are you giving him? What are you doing for him? You know, the, the New Yorkers in Florida have a saying, what, did, what have you done for me lately? Okay, what have you done for the Lord lately, right? I mean, we always go to him with a to-do list. Oh, I got my honey-do list. Man, I need all this stuff done, Lord. And when, when do we go to him and go, man, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm your girl. I'm your guy. I got, you, I got you back, Lord. I got you back. What you need done? It's done. It's done. But this is determining the splendor. You make that decision day by day. The splendor. So it will be in the resurrection of the dead. The body that's sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. Those of us with gray heads know it's perishing. <laughs> Those of you that are young, oh, Lorenzo, <laughs> you don't feel that. You don't feel that. You don't feel perishing. No, you feel good. Trust me, I got up this morning. I knew I was perishing. <clears throat> it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. That word glory is D-O-X-A, the Greek word for the light that emanates from God. So you're going to be raised emanating the light that comes from God. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it's raised a spiritual body. If there's a natural body, it's a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a nephesh, a living being. The second man, Adam, a life-giving spirit. <clears throat> His spirit gives life to you. So the earth suit's wasting away, the jar of clay's falling apart, but the guy inside is getting stronger and more powerful. Amen? Amen. The spiritual didn't come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. Okay, you're wearing one of those. The second man, Adam, is from heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those of the earth. Okay, Adam's earthly, a man of the dust. We all in that right now. And is the heavenly man, so are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, we're going to bear the image of the heavenly man. The heavenly man glows. The heavenly man emits light. Matter of fact, we're going to cut that verse for the sake of time, but... In the original message, we went to Revelation and showed where the light of Elohim, Father and Son, is so bright that you don't even see the sun in the sky anymore. That's pretty bright. 
That's pretty bright. But he is pretty bright. Amen. So glory means radiating light. Your mortal body does not radiate light, but your new body is going to radiate light. Actually, the new man inside of you is radiating light now, but it's in a jar of clay, so you can't see it. The amount of light radiating is going to vary. Now we're going to go one verse, Hebrews 11, verse 12. Hebrews 11, verse 12. Just one little quick verse. Because <clears throat> I'm tying you back into what he said about the resurrection. <clears throat> Talking about Abram. So from this one man and him as good as dead came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. So there's an earthly seed and a heavenly seed. Well, you've been a part of the earthly seed for a good long while, but you're aspiring to be a part of the heavenly seed. Amen? Yes. Anybody want to go back to the earthly seed? Yes. No, I don't, want, I don't want the resurrection my dad's going to get. I want the one I got planned. I got the one that I have attained already. Amen? Isn't that what Paul said? This one thing I, I, I strive to attain, the resurrection from the dead? Yeah, I want the good one. I want the good one. Didn't obey all this stuff to get the bad one. I mean, I like obeying. It's not that I don't. So the seed is like the stars, and that seed, there's a seed that's like the earth. Now, the formula, and I gave, I gave a lot of formulas uh, eight years ago now when I did this, but Zadi times Aleph equals Tav. It's the formula that runs the whole thing. Now, in 2012, we did a message on Yeshua, <clears throat> and we found out from the Hebrew letter study of the branch that the letter Zadi represents the righteous of God. And the last thing listed in Hebrew for, he's Hebrew for Christians way back in 2012 was the bride of Aleph. So the righteous of God who are going to marry Yeshua times the presence of Elohim in your life it equals Tav, your destination in God. It's a simple formula. It's a very simple formula. We've actually done some variations on the formula and shown some good things from it. But this is the formula for the morning star forming in your heart. Okay, we all want the morning star forming in our heart. Yes. This is like the number one most important priority for you on a daily, everyday basis is the morning star forming in your heart. This is for people who love to worship and who can attain a cod with Yeshua in the worship. Now, we got a lot of different ways to do that, and all of these are good. We like to do flags. We like to do dance. We like to sing. We like to shake the tambourines. But the bottom line is all of those things got to lead you to it someplace in that worship service that you can become one spirit with Yeshua. Amen. That's the goal for every bit of that so that you can get, whether it's a minute, two minutes, five minutes, maybe three songs if you're lucky, and you can be one spirit with him because that is the goal for all of it because that's what we have to learn how to do, become a cod with him, right? Adam knew his wife Eve, and she bore him a son. You know Yeshua in the spirit, and you get the morning star rising. Come on, that, that was good. It was a great place to shout for the Pentecostal church that's kind of <laughs> sleeping right now. Hey, I only had four hours sleep, guys. I mean, y'all can shout a little bit. So those who long for, deeply desire, true intimacy and oneness with Yeshua in his spirit, this is what this is for. Those who can push aside every el everything else and reach a cod with him. Selfless oneness and worship forms that morning star in your heart and we have to start with the righteousness of living his commandments now i'm not going to turn there for the sake of time but in isaiah 8 and verse 20 it says to the law and the testimony if you don't have those two there's no light of dawn in you well, if you want the morning star rising you got to have the law of moses and the testimony of jesus it's not optional those are the two things listed right here in isaiah 8 now we're going to go to Isaiah 60, and it's we use these verses for a lot of things, <clears throat> but I want you to look at them in terms of your resurrection from the dead. Your resurrection of the dead. Isaiah 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Light in you has come. You bearing light has come. The glory of the Lord rises. Maybe that should be within you, not upon you. So everybody's so fond of saying that the spirit can't be in anybody until Jesus has ascended to heaven. So they, they I think they kind of warp stuff. There's not a lot of Hebrew, not a lot of prepositions in Hebrew. So you get to choose the prepositions you want. And since people can't see it, they choose the ones that are like the least offensive. What, what if it's the glory of the Lord rises within you? 
See, darkness covers the earth, thick darkness is over the peoples. That's when we get resurrected, right? And his glory, uh, but the Lord rises in you, and his glory is in you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. All assemble and come to you. Your sons from afar, your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will be radiant. And that word radiant in Hebrew means a river of light. A river of light. So back to the river again, except the light. A river of light. Just like Paul recorded, star power radiates light. So I'm not going to go to Matthew 5.14, but the verse there, you're the light of the world, means you're reflecting his light. You're reflecting his light. How do you reflect his light? When you keep his law. When you keep his law, you reflect his light. But we're not talking about reflecting light. We're talking about having his light in you coming out of you. So we're going to go right on to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm obviously not going to do Rise and Shine number two because that was a four-hour message. I'm not going to try to do that next time, but I will I will probably try to pick and choose a few pieces out of the next five of them to review next time. John chapter 1 and verse 4. In him was life. Talking about Yeshua. In Yeshua was life. So here's life in Yeshua. And that life is the light of men. The life he put in you with the Holy Spirit is light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can't overcome it. How's that? Because if you go in the darkest room, when you flip the light switch on, it's light. The two can't be there together. It's either it's a toggle switch. It's either light or it's dark. Well, the light switch was supposed to have been flipped in you. Holy Ghost, it's on. There should be no darkness in you. Because... He's living in you, and he's light. Light. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. We're going to talk about John in a minute. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself is not the light. He came as a witness to the light. You know what he said? He's the light. He came and said it over and over again. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. So Yeshua came in this world to put light in every one of us. And we're going to read his let- the red letters where he says it. The true light is coming to give you light. He came to salt you with star power. John chapter 5 and verse 35. <clears throat> John was the lamp that burned and gave light. So again, he's talking about John. He's, you know, the apostle John has told you about John the Baptist. Now Jesus is telling you about John the Baptist. He was a lamp that burned. So he was full of the Holy Spirit. Says so, right? When he's still not born. He's in Elizabeth. He was full of the Holy Spirit. And he leaped for joy when Mary came in, pregnant with you. I mean, come on. And you chose for a time to enjoy the light. So he was a lamp that burned and people got to see the light from John the Baptist. What did Jesus say? No one ever born of a woman is greater than John the Baptist. He was lit with the Holy Ghost, ready to go. We need to be lit. We need to be lit with the Holy Ghost. Amen? John 8, verse 12. So he had light, (coughs) fire and light, and he was gaining mass and energy. That's stars. Stars burn. Matter of fact, every element on the periodic table was burned in the sun. The sun burns elements into being. John 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke again to the people and said, I'm the light of the world. (coughs) Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So not only is this energy going to illuminate things around you not only is this energy going to show things for what they are this energy is going to give you life well the older you get the greater that hair gets the more you need some life amen all righty so following yeshua living the way that he lived and opening up to the spirit of god is how to have this light you got to open up to the spirit of god you got to open it up and let it flow john 12 and verse 36 so we look at things 
and yet, but we're not really looking at them. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, we, we have we have a, a dumbed down level of looking at things, and we don't really look at them and think about the consequences. Verse 36: Believe in the light, while you have the light, so that you may become children of the light. Children of the light. How you become children of the light? Well, the life of Jesus, the light, has got to be in you. That's how you become children of the light. If you don't have Jesus living in you, you're still in darkness. Or let me put it another way. If you're still in darkness, it means you haven't got the light of Jesus in you. Because it's toggle switch, remember? It's either you're light or you're dark. It's not, it's not. So we talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so we look at visible light. It's like this tiny little sliver on this long spectrum of energy. So you've got these miles-long radio waves. You've got infinitesimally small gamma rays that would fry you to uh, ashes in seconds. And he, this is how his life manifests in the physical creation. This is why he's omnipresent and omnipowerful because everything in this creation is held together and operates on light energy, not visible energy, the whole spectrum light energy equals MC squared. He's the C squared, right? Everything in this creation is based on the light, everything. When you drop the energy level in an electron, a photon comes out. And when you raise the energy of an electron, a photon goes in. This is basic chemistry 101. But the brilliance of it is this. God is so brilliant, right? The energy level is shown by the color on the photon. Roy G. Biv as the electron goes up and the reverse when it comes down. That's some brilliant right there. And brilliant has to do with light. God is so good, and all the time, he is so good. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So we have to yield to him and trust him to work that new creation inside. That new creation is his spirit combined with the, the spirit he put inside of you that gives you life and intellect and life. So the spirit of man, the human spirit, and, and the Holy Spirit combined to make a new creature in you. You're a new creature. You're not the old creature. And that new creature is based on... The light, the life of the Son of God. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Okay, seeing takes place in the mind. And so the one we know as the adversary has blinded the minds of unbelievers because seeing is in the mind. It's just light splotches. The mind has to interpret into sight. But look what he's blinded to. So they cannot see the light of the gospel. They're blinded to the light of the gospel that displays the, but that word glory is doxa, and it means the light emanating from the presence of God that's in Christ. <laughs> Who is the image of God? For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord in ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in your heart. When you do that, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the Holy Spirit, the light's in your heart. And that's up to you to make it a strong light and not the little dim light. He made his light shine in your hearts to give you the light of the knowledge of God's radiation displayed in the face of Christ. Doxa again, the light that emanates from God. But you have this treasure in a jar of clay. You have this treasure in a jar of clay. And we talked about one time how we're like Gideon's army. We have the torch of the Holy Ghost inside a jar of clay, and you've got to break the clay at the shofar to bring your torch out. Wow. That's the rescue. You've got to break the jar at the shofar for your torch. Yeah. Come on. So blinded people are in dark bodies. What I'm talking about is black body radiation is a chemical term. Anybody that doesn't emit light is called a black body. And all of modern chemistry is based on black body radiation. Black body radiation comes as the, the atoms and the molecules de decay. Radiation comes out of them. But it's not the same as like radium. Now, see, I'm old. 
Madame Curie and, and the, the discovery of radium, they used to put radium on the points of the gold watches so you could see in the dark what time it was, but they found out that gave you cancer, so they quit. Because radiation's coming out of it. So you were irradiating yourself without knowing it because they didn't know any better. Oh, it goes in the dark. This makes a great watch. And they had clocks and everything. <laughs> My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and sometimes it's, <laughs> it's chemical, right? So blinded people are not radiating their own light. Glorious bodies like the one you're hoping to receive radiate light but you're holding it you should be holding this morning star in a jar of clay it is star power forming in your hearts by the power of god's spirit ephesians chapter 5 oh come on somebody we should be jumping and shouting up in this place man you, you want the star power right you got a morning star rising yes. morning star rising right what, what did peter say you should pay attention to it as a light in a dark place as you see all the stuff happening uh if you're not seeing the stuff happening you are blind you need to get you some news somewhere if you ain't seeing what's happening i mean it's rough out there you should be every day you should, morning star let me feel the morning star morning star oh yes morning star yes pray in tongues pray in tongues pray in tongues blow it up blow it up fan it fan it fan it flame fan it flame every day because that morning star rising is your ticket out of here oh come on Oh, come on. See, I'm old. See, I'm old. When I was in high school, we used to be singing the Eddie Money song, Two Tickets to Paradise. You got a morning star rising. I mean, you don't get that. I mean, only three people got that. But anyway, <laughs> Ephesians 5 and verse 8. For you were once in darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. Now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Rather, expose them. Well, you know, you don't have any choice. When you walk in, you expose it. Yeah. It's a toggle switch. You walk in, light came in the room, and everybody trips when you came in. Why? Because you just exposed them whether you know it or not. Right. You walked in, you weren't paying any attention, but all of a sudden, they feel naked. Naked and afraid. Light came in. <laughs> I'm up to no good. <laughs> Every time you go in, you're exposing their evil deeds of darkness. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. And you may not know what they're doing in secret, but they think you do when you show up. <laughs> But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes light. This is why it said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ is going to shine in you. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. We're getting it now. So this light from within causes us to think and behave differently. It causes us to put the thinking and the focus on God's kingdom and off of our old loyalties. You can't have secondary ideologies. Torah, we're good. You can like all the stuff you want to, but you can't have these ideologies that it can only be that way because, because, because. Because if it's not Torah, then it's just wishful thinking, which is great at your house. It's just not great everywhere else. The light of Christ forming within us should be shining out to other people. Colossians chapter 1. You used to have people with all kind of additional loyalties. I got one loyalty, Jesus. You're with him, I'm with you. <clears throat> Colossians 1 verse 12 and giving thank giving joyful thanks to the father who qualified you hey. right well some people somebody's happy to be qualified <clears throat> to share in the inheritance Hallelujah. you want some inheritance yes, sir. of his holy people in the kingdom of light you get an inheritance in the kingdom of light. You have nothing in the kingdom of darkness, but you got an inheritance in the kingdom of light. Amen. You got an inheritance. So the kingdom of light's got an inheritance for the heavenly seed of Abraham, and that inheritance is you're going to be a star in the constellation of God. Hallelujah. So people said, "Oh yes, we're going to give you a gift. We named a star after you. Don't name a star after me. I get my own star. I have to have one named. I'm gonna be one. I'm gonna be my own star." First Thessalonians chapter five. Verse 5. No need to claim, name and claim when you got a birth. <clears throat> Verse 5. You're all children of the light. You don't belong to the night. 
You're children of the light. Why? Because you got the Holy Spirit. This is a kingdom where the citizens radiate light. The morning star rising in your hearts right now should alert you to what is next, and that's the rescue of the saints. Because the morning star rising in your heart is your ticket to go. Come on. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 32. I got two tickets to paradise. Pack your bags, we leave tonight. Some of us remember that old song. Remember those earlier days after you received the light? The other part of the other NIV I have says when you were enlightened. And you endured in a great conflict of suffering. So after you received the light, you got tried. You got put into trials. You got put into fiery trials. As soon as you got saved, that's what happened to you. You received the light, but you stood your ground. Why did you stand your ground? Because the life of Jesus is in you. The life is the light of men, and it gives you the light to see, and it gives you the power because light energy is power. It's not just light that you can see. It's the whole spectrum. Crank it up. Crank you up. So you can go through the things and overcome them. And I'm going to show you the importance of that in just a second. <clears throat> you aren't born with this power. You've got to go to Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> You're not born with it. You've got to go to Jesus to get it. The only way to get the power to overcome your junk is Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. You're a chosen people, a royal priesthood. I'm writing the book right now. A holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Hallelujah. So people without the spirit are dark bodies. People with the, spirit, with the spirit are developing light bodies. Black body radiation is from the decay of the matter, which out there manifests as sin. Black body radiation in human beings manifests in sin. That's why they keep doing it. But light bodies should manifest in the ability to overcome sin. And that's important. Matter gets energized and it emits light, right? So you got these fluorescent bulbs here and there's a, there's a phosphorus gas in there. And as the electricity shoots from electrode to electrode, that gas turns into plasma and it emits light. <clears throat> the man invented that in the 1880s. No one's ever beat it yet. 1880s, that's some old technology. But see, likewise, when the Holy Ghost energizes you, you're supposed to emit light. Right. So though your body's in decay, your spirit should be growing in mass, radiating light and heat, and exerting gravity on other outside dark bodies. So when you go into places, people should feel you are different. You ever notice how they kind of gravitate to you? So you got to start giving them materials. Here, I'm going to bring you my magazine. Magazine, great great evangelistic tool. Here's my magazine. Let me give you a magazine. A new one came out this quarter. Got a new magazine. Pop, new magazine. Because that way you're feeding or radiating light and heat to people in your orbit. Gently to draw them in. Amen? First John chapter 1. <clears throat> verse 5 this is the message we've heard from him and declare to you God is light in him is no darkness okay God's light there is no darkness God is light there is no darkness if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness we're a liar see the apostle John's not cutting you any slack he ain't gonna talk nice to you like I do he's gonna tell you straight up if you're walking in darkness and you're claiming to be in Jesus you're a liar that's the old school apostles, right? <clears throat> and you don't live in the truth. You don't live in the truth. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, then we're going to have fellowship. We're going to have fellowship. And the blood of Jesus is going to purify us from all sin. True fellowship is between two people that are emitting light. you got a glorious 
glorious inside of your jar of clay. And when you have fellowship with somebody else like that, you energize each other. The more Holy Ghost in each one of you, the more you energize each other. You come away from that conversation more energized and powerful than you when you went in. Now, somebody who doesn't have the power of the Holy Spirit, who's in a dark body, they drain you. After you've been talking to them for an hour, man, you got to go take a nap. We, we all know what that means, right? It's an interchange of star power between believers. 1 John 2 and verse 8. Fellowship is an interchange of star power between believers. Verse 8. Yet I'm writing you a new command. It's truth is seen in him and you because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. So the darkness... <clears throat> like we said before, you turn the light on, the darkness is gone. The true light should be shining in your hearts, which should wipe out the darkness in your life. True light in your heart, no darkness in your life. Pretty good, huh? Again, I didn't write this. I'm just telling you what it is. Is Jesus Christ living in you, growing in you, and radiating from you? Now, I'm not going to go to Revelation 21, but in Revelation 21, it says that the light of Elohim, Father and Son, is going to be so bright that there'll be no need of sun, moon, or stars for light on the earth. In other words, they're going to be so bright you won't see that ball up in the sky. It would be too light down here. It, that, that will be insignificant, right? God radiates extreme light, and glory is the radiation of electromagnetic magnetic energy. We are going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. I do want you to see this. 1 Timothy 6. Guys, this was a two-hour message first time I did it. And verse 16. Talking about the Father on the throne, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen nor can see. Why? Because he's an unapproachable light. Everything in, in where he's at is white out. White out. White out. You can't see anything. Unapproachable light. For people in black bodies, but for people in light bodies, not unapproachable. Our bodies have to radiate both light and heat from the star power within. Isaiah 10 and verse 17. For those of you in TV land, I encourage you to, to uh, uh, go on to the Hungry Hearts Ministry uh, dot com website and purchase our book, uh, Rise and Shine Like the Stars. <clears throat> Small donation. But this book is game changing. Uh, it's a result of like seven of these messages, and this is like the first part. Isaiah 10 and verse 17. The light of Israel is a fire. The Holy One a flame. And a single day it will burn and consume. So our God is a fire. Our God is a fire, and he's called the light of Israel. That's a title. You see that's in caps, right? That's his title, the light. So God is a fire, nuclear fire to be exact. Stars burn hot with nuclear fire, which transforms matter and creates elements. Amen? Psalm 97. Psalm 97, verse 3. Fire goes before him and consumes all of his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. It's pretty heavy, right? Fire goes before him. He's hot. The devil's not hot. He's hot. That's right. The devil's ice cold. Avi is smoking hot. Well, when he came down on top of Mount Sinai, he burned a mountain black, right? Yeah, yeah. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. The devil doesn't have any life or power in him. And you know, you're packing heat. You're packing that star power. you got to remember that. When they're messing with you, they're poking you in the ribs and giving you a hard time. Don't just go, oh, my life's terrible. Close your eyes and look for them. Oh, you're in the corner over there. Oh. Put some heat on them. They don't like it. 
Matthew 3 and verse 11. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who's more powerful. He's going to baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. So you got to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit first because that's the fuel to which he can ignite you later. The baptism of fire is a second bapt or a third baptism in this case because you got to be water baptized to get the Holy Spirit baptism, right? <clears throat> This, this fire is the beginning of potential star fire, and it ignites the human spirit within. And if you remember, I did the drawings one time that the, the Holy Spirit in you combined with your spirit, the new man, if you have the Holy Spirit, then the fire of God acts like a wick. But if you don't have it, Tabera, it burns you down. Remember I had the picture of the guy burning down, and I had the picture of the other guy burning like a wick? It depends on having the Holy Ghost in your new creation. You got the Holy Spirit in your new creation. The Tavera fire that killed the rebels is also the fire that made Moses and Aaron have all that power. <clears throat> Luke chapter 12. Got to get a couple of these in. Luke 12, verse 49. The Holy Spirit is a fuel source. Just like the gas line coming into my gas logs is a fuel source. So you're praying in tongues is keeping that flow of Holy Ghost coming in. And that flow of Holy Ghost coming in is the fuel to allow the fire of God to burn on your new creation like a wick. Well, we got the menorah here, right? The wick burns up if there's no oil. The oil represents the Holy Ghost. As long as there's oil, it burns like that and the wick isn't hurt. But if there's no oil, it burns the wick. All right. Luke 12, verse 49. I've come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Yeshua was telling you he wants to light you on fire. How hard are you to light? What is it? Are, are, you, are you wet? Are you wet? You don't want to light? You need some lighter fluid? I mean, what's it going to take to ignite you? You know, you got the little fire starter. Do you need a Bic? You used to have a Bic over here. There's a Bic over there. What does it take to ignite the Holy Ghost in you? Well, you've done it a couple times. And the Lord's like, y'all keep letting it go out. We'll make you light yourself this time. Okay, Pentecost is coming. Yeah. couple of weeks. We're going to do it. Yeah. We're going to do it. This time we want to hold the fire. This time we want to cultivate the fire. This time we want to be good priests who the first thing they do every morning is cultivate the fire, the holy fire. You take the good embers and you get some good wood going and you keep that fire going. You get all the ashes cleaned off. You do all your other duties. Then you take that fire and you move it to the center. You get you some more wood, but you never let the fire go out. Isn't that what was wrong with Nadab and Abihu? They let the fire go out and then they brought strange fire in because they were too proud to say they screwed up. Oops. We don't want to do that. <clears throat> I'm not going to go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 3, but we already know the story of the day of Shavuot when the Holy Spirit came with tongues of fire. And so this was Zadi times Olive, fire on Shavuot. This is what we want every Shavuot, right? Zadi times Olive, Holy Ghost, fire on Shavuot. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 13. <clears throat> Interesting verse. So I wasn't on TV. I could sing in, in Corinth, but I can't sing well enough to be on TV and do that. But anyway, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 13. Their work will be shown for what it is because the day, they have judgment, will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and fire will test every person's work. So everything you've done for the Lord is going to be tested with fire. If what you built survives, then you're going to get your reward. Everything goes into fire. If what you build is burned up, you'll, you will escape into the kingdom, but you will suffer a loss that you have no reward. Everything gets judged with fire. So that's why you got to build with the fire. So you're doing a message. First thing you got to do is get on the tallit, stoke the Holy Ghost. Get the Holy Ghost fire stoked, get some word from God, then get right on in there and dig. Amen? I love digging. I told my brother that yesterday. I just so love digging. First Thessalonians, 
First Thessalonians five. <laughs> Thessalonians. Maybe if I was on Medea. <laughs> I love digging into the Bible. I could do it all day long, and I never get tired. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 19. Do not quench the Spirit. Don't quench it. Don't put out the Spirit's fire. Keep it going. Stoke it. It's the energy source for everything you need. <clears throat> you got to cultivate it, nurture it, and protect it. Mark chapter 9. Verse 49. Everyone will be salted with fire. Going to be salted with fire. The question is, is it going to burn like a wick? Or is it going to judge? Tavera. See, Yeshua is salted you with fire. Fire can go out if it lacks fuel or it can start a chain reaction. An uncontrollable chain reaction in the Holy Spirit is what we want every time we worship in hungry hearts. Now, that should not manifest in poor behavior, such as shouting and screaming and jumping around and acting crazy. God doesn't do crazy things. We do crazy things when the power of God hits us because we got darkness inside, and when you put that much power on the darkness, you get an explosion. You know what they tell you? If you combine light matter and dark matter, you get an explosion, so much so that they're trying to do it, even though they tell you that it'll unravel the whole universe. But they're still trying to do it in the collider and burn, Switzerland. They're still trying to do it. Shows you they ain't got any sense. <laughs> you're telling me it's going to unravel the universe, but you're trying to do it anyway. Okay, sure, yes. <laughs> you're the people we need in charge. Yeah. So stars create matter when they burn. So when you're having an uncontrollable reaction in the Holy Spirit, it should enable you to become Echad, or one spirit with Yeshua, and it should create a usable product in your life. And that product is God's character. It should not manifest in crazy behavior. It should manifest in God's character in your life. The star power should produce a mass in you, and that mass is God's character. The character that we possess is the mass of our star power. Character is the ability, the will, and the action to do the right thing under duress by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if obedience under duress and praying in tongues is how you fuse God's character from your circumstance. So let me ask you a question. Is the stuff you're going through a hard time because you did something stupid, or is it a trial because you're being pushed to break one of God's commandments? That's the rub, isn't it? Because we all do stupid things and we reap those consequences. That's just having a hard time. And we all have plenty of them, amen? And you can still use a hard time to generate a little something positive in your life. Usually it's called wisdom. As you mull over why you did it and why you shouldn't have. But when you're willing to obey under duress, I'm going to lose my job over the Sabbath, but I'm going to lose it because I'm not compromising Sabbath. Or I'm going to lose my house over tithing, but I'm not going to quit tithing. Because I've done those. Yeah, I'm willing to lose the grandkids because I'm not going to break the Sabbath for them. I mean, I, I'm, I'm only beginning to learn what you got to do as an older person how to keep the Sabbath because it's a little different. But the thing is that we have to learn how to obey under duress. you got to obey God under duress. It's not a trial if it does not involve you being pushed to break one of God's laws and commandments. It's only the breaking of the commandments that's a trial. The fiery trial is trying to get you out of the faith. So you generate mass from obeying under duress, praying in the Spirit, and that mass is the character of God. Because the character of God is, I will follow what Avi wants regardless of the consequence to me. Consequence to me means nothing. My allegiance to the Father in heaven is everything. And that 
you'd be amazed how that just changes so many things in your life. You sit down with a pencil and paper and you, you put your problems in those terms, you're going to find half of them aren't really problems and you can just dispense with that right off the bat. And some of these, oh, you know, I really did just screw that up. You're going to have some honest come to Jesus moments where you ask him to bail you out because I just screwed that up. And then you're going to see where your trials really are and you're going to go, I can't compromise on that. That's where I got to get strong. See, it just clears up a lot of stuff. Again, light makes it visible. Put a little heat, a little light on the subject, you'd be amazed what you see. 1 Peter chapter 4. People told me for years, you're having a hard time, she'll, she must be sinning. Man, you guys are like Job's friends. <laughs> never forget the one guy he, I'll never forget this as long as I live and this guy meant well he, he wasn't trying to be ugly or anything and he said uh, I can tell you how to get rid of your financial problems Billy I go please tell me how so I can go away he goes tithe <laughs> I was triple tithing that year okay <laughs> the minister called me I didn't call him he called me he goes I understand you're losing your house yes he goes, uh, maybe you should be on third tithe assistance. I can't. It's my third tithe year. Well, maybe you shouldn't third tithe this year if you need assistance and you're losing your house. These are my exact words. Mr. Dick, I fear to not third tithe. I fear. I skipped, two, I skipped three second tithes last year, and now I'm losing my house. I fear. To equivocate on a penny of what's going on now. <laughs> and my friend tells me, just tithe, your financial problems go away. It's a trial, silly. It's a trial. I'm producing character because I'm going to obey under duress. Didn't matter what the cost was. And the cost was extensive. It was like 10 years in the wilderness, but that's all right. That's all right. I didn't flinch. I didn't flinch. First Peter 4, verse 12. Character. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trial that's come to test you. So what happens when we get a trial? Oh, Jesus, take it away! Oh, God, why is this happening to me? I can't believe it! I was doing everything right! Well, no, you were doing everything right. That's why you got a trial. You're getting tested! Now, I know this makes everybody uncomfortable when I say it this way, but you should love your test. You got a chance to make an A! You got a chance to make it A. Your grade's built on tests, right? You don't get a grade that just plucked out of Well, you do now. But back in the day, you didn't get a grade plucked out of the air. You had to actually have test papers and scores, and they got averaged together. Today, you walk in, they just give you a grade. I don't like you. Just get an F. <clears throat> but you got a chance to get an A with God when the trial comes. Just answer the question. You already know what it is. See, the problem with the trial is that we don't know what to do. The problem is we don't want to do it. We already know what to do. How do they say that now? I already know it. You already know it. Just do it. Get to A, take your lumps, it'll be all right. I've lost all kind of stuff. It's okay. So nothing strange is happening to you, but rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when the glory comes. Hallelujah. You want to be overjoyed when the glory comes, right? Why, you, why would you be overjoyed when the glory comes? Because you have glory. If the glory comes and you're left out, you won't be overjoyed. But if the glory comes and you're glowing too, you're going to be happy. I mean, really happy. I don't mean a little bit happy. Oh, I'm happy. No, I mean, you'll be, you can jump and shout and scream and holler there. That'd be a good time to do it. And nobody will bother with it too. So that character produces, obeying under duress produces that star mass of character within. Glory is the radiation of light and heat. And as we increase in mass, that is the character of God, we increase in glory, that's light and heat. I'm not going to go to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, but it says the Son is the express image of the Father. That word is character. Express image is character. The Son is the character of the Father. The Son has the Father's star mass. He is creating star mass within all of us as we go undergo trials. Few successful trials, very little mass. Oh, where are my trials? No one likes your trials. Just check the right box and get the A. Just take the A and go home. It's all good, right? Many successful trials, really strong mass. 
A star's mass is the source of its gravity. Hebrews chapter 2. A star's mass is the source of its gravity. See, we all know these things. We all took this in general science, right? 7th grade, 8th grade. I don't remember. <laughs> well, I used to say it that way. Now it's like when I sleep, I can actually remember stuff. So now it's like I didn't sleep in two days, so now I can't remember anything. <laughs> Hebrews uh, chapter 2 and verse 10. Titus is not going to work. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. God Almighty got made perfect by suffering in Jesus' body. If God Almighty got made perfect by suffering in Jesus' body, guess what's coming for you? <laughs> So embrace it. You ain't gonna run. You ain't gonna run it from it. You you just in. Just for you. I told Lorenzo years ago I was gonna get him a T-shirt. Actually, it started with Campbell. Y'all remember Jeremy Campbell? I told him one time he was equivocating on something, and he goes, "Son, I baptized you." And he's, I said, "Look, it's not that I, I'm any different than anybody else." But you were clearly, it was clearly explained to you what's going on. I said, you're just in. <laughs> so I was talking to Lorenzo about that, and he said I should get a T-shirt made up. You're just in. <laughs> <clears throat> you're just in. He salted you with fire. You're going to go through the trials. You're going to have to obey under duress. Pray up in the spirit. You're just in. Develop the star power within. Yeshua is going to take you in those trials and painful suffering and the Holy Spirit is going to turn that painful suffering into the star mass of God's character and as this mass grows you're going to gain radiation <clears throat> and you're going to gain more mass therefore you're going to gain gravity you're going to gain gravity <clears throat> the gravity is going to attract those people who are drawn to the God in you they're drawn to the God in you. They probably wouldn't even like you if they knew you. But they're drawn to the God in you, right? You go places, and if you ever expose your real self, they're like, oh, I don't like you anymore. Before, when it was just Jesus coming through you, they're like, oh, I love you. You're the greatest. And then when they see you, you're like, oh, you're terrible. So, I mean, they're drawn to the God in you. So feed them. Feed them. You know, the Scott's commercial out right now, right? Your lawn. Feed it. Feed it. <laughs> you know, Scott's. You know, anyway. <clears throat> so gravity is the force that holds people without the spirit in orbit around you people are drawn because of the God within you got to be careful because you got to be as gentle as Jesus without ever compromising God's law now the mass of a star causes it to exert gravity and the gravity is the charisma or the gifts of the Holy Spirit the gifts of the Holy Spirit let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 The charisma or the gravity is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 22. Tongues that are a sign for unbelievers. Tongues are a sign for unbelievers. They're not a sign for you. You already know what it is. You're, they're a sign for unbelievers. It's pulling them in. The manifestation, manifestation of the gifts is to draw people who don't have the light of God into your orbit. Gravity also draws an additional star power, a matter for the star power to burn. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So we look at it the bad way, right? You low on energy, you flagging, pray in the Holy Ghost, it'll build you up. You need some power? Pray in the Holy Ghost. It'll build you up. You need something? Pray in the Holy Ghost. It'll build you up. This, this is not a bad verse. All tongues that defies you. Okay, somebody else going to do it? You, you, you got the power port on the side where you can plug into the, the, uh, the DC adapter in the wall? I mean, you got a USB port or something I don't know about? I mean, the only way you got to build up is to pray in the Spirit. You got to pray in tongues. You got to pray in the Spirit. That's what gets you going. That's what gets everything going. Amen? Now, tongues is a, a, 
sign that the Holy Spirit energy is flowing. It comes into us from somewhere and it goes out of you. You know, you're a crack pot, you're a leaky vessel. It's going out of you all the time. The only way to stay full is to pray in the Spirit because you've got to keep refilling because it's just flowing out. We're all crack pots. That's an old joke. It goes back a long time. So we have to open up that flow and let God use that to draw people to him through us. And that energizes people. The people feel your energy, like we talked about before. When it's two people with the light, the star power, they're fellowshipping, that builds each other up. That star power going back and forth, man, you come away, you're energized, man. You had a con- I got a friend in Florida, we talk, and I feel like I just had three cups of coffee when we're done. But you're talking to somebody that doesn't have that level of the Holy Spirit or maybe doesn't have it at all. They drain you. Sometimes you get done talking to them, you I need a nap. I mean, it just, you got to pray back up. I mean, no one minds plugging their phone back in, right? I mean, I see y'all with your phone chargers. I just turn mine off a lot. So, 2 Timothy, verse 1. Humility is how you let that work. Humility is how you let it work effectively. You stay humble, and it, it will work. And you've got to feed them. They need, they need you know, because I, I talk to people, and, you know, when, when they tell you what they're, they're learning in church, it's not a lot. It's really not a lot. I, I don't see how they live. I starve to death with some of the stuff they tell me that they get in, in these, some of these other churches. I starve to death. You get a quarter of a verse. Maybe you got half a passage. I mean, you can't live on that. But I got to have some word. I don't know about you, but I got in the morning, I got to have me some word. Second Timothy verse one, uh, chapter 1 and verse 6. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And I thought, whoo, that's Kelly Max Maria. Nope, that's charisma. You got to fan the gifts into flame. That's why we do the schmode leak at the front of the service, to fan the gifts into flame. Shmod Leek at Halahava. And in the center of the Halahava, which is to blazing fire, is love, Ahav. The love for Jesus is at the heart of the fire because he's the light, and it's how it all comes together right there. So you've got to take an active process of intensifying the holy fire within. This word for gift is charisma, and the gifts of the Spirit are intensified by actively fanning them. How do you do that? Gravity comes from mass. Mass comes from participating in your trials by adhering to the law of God as explained in the prophets and amplified by Jesus and praying in the Spirit often as you're in those trials, fanning the Holy Spirit into flame. In other words, tap into the star power within, allowing the Holy Spirit to work its power in your life effectively. The star power will radiate light, heat, gain mass, and exert more gravity, which are the gifts of the Spirit which draws in more. So the whole process is a self-fulfilling, generous way to grow the star power in you, which, as the Apostle Paul Peter said, is the light shining in a dark place that alerts you that your rescue is imminent. God bless you. Thank you so much. Pastor Bill Schultz. I hope that you enjoyed this message. I hope it encourages you to have a closer walk with Jesus and helps you to get stronger in the Word of God. If you're interested in more information about Hungry Hearts Ministries, you can go to either one of our websites, Hungry Hearts Ministry with a Y.com or HungryHeartsChurch.com for more information. We have many free materials available, including our magazine Pursuit. If you will email me at HungryHeartsMIN at AOL.com, I will mail this to you every quarter. The only thing that we're ever going to use your uh, mailing address for is to send you this magazine or maybe invite you to a meeting. Hope you enjoyed this message, and we look forward to seeing you again next week.